Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh's really sucked ass lately, huh? In the weeks of what should have been the most exciting time of the year to play the game, the WCQ season, the Yu-Gi-Oh community has been facing one of its most unsettling times in recent memory. Pro players are quitting left and right, the game continues to have less and less return on investment, and the format is dominated by a $400 tier 0 engine that revolves around a guy that looks like this. Now, of course, this isn't the first time that the Yu-Gi-Oh boomers have proclaimed that Yu-Gi-Oh is dying, and it sure as hell won't be the last, but something just feels different this time, right? I can't be the only one that feels like Yu-Gi-Oh is finally starting to lose its untouchable status. With the success of newer TCGs, players are starting to realize that they don't just have to put up with Konami's shortcomings anymore, and a lot of players are jumping ship as a result. Now, a lot of people will oppose this by saying that there isn't a single other TCG out right now that can produce a type of interactive gameplay that's on the same level as Yu-Gi-Oh, if you can call 2024 Yu-Gi-Oh interactive. All right, I'm just waiting to see whose card comes down first here. Oh, I think that's the card that's that is standby standby just dimension really telling turn. because that could be his turn or his opponent's turn with the dimension shift of it. Oh, 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 oh. So it's clearly Samuel's turn, who now has to live with a dimension shifter, but also a Bochami Berulia. And there's a normal summon. Well, it just so happens that in a time where I've personally been growing more distant from Yu-Gi-Oh than ever before, I think I found the perfect solution. What's up YouTube, my name is JT, and today I'm here to talk to you about Elestrals. Elestrals is a new TCG created by A-Drive, a guy who all but set aside his career as a widely successful Pokemon YouTuber to create and market this game. And believe me when I tell you, he absolutely cooked with this one. Elestrals provides a kind of satisfaction in gameplay that I really haven't been able to find in any other game besides Yu-Gi-Oh. I've tried Lurkana, I had a short stint playing Pokemon, and I glanced at several others, but trust me when I say, Elestrals tops them all. Elestrals is a game that revolves around three main types of cards. The Elestrals, the Runes, and the Spirits. The Elestrals are your creatures, your monsters, your units that do the majority of the work when it comes to progressing the game state and dealing damage. Elestrals come in all kinds of forms, from small, unassuming play starters to massively powerful game enders, to everybody's favorite Elestral, Eddie. Eddie Stonks, let's go! The runes are your prototypical back row that are used to either support your Elestrals or counter your opponents. There are five different types of runes in the game right now, and they all provide a unique interaction that helps progress the game state on every turn. Finally, the Spirits, one of the coolest resource systems I've seen implemented in any game. Spirits are essentially if you took energy from Pokemon and directly connected them to your life total like some sort of hospital IV. Not only is the objective of the game to deplete your opponent's 20 card spirit deck before your own, but every single card in the game costs spirits to cast, meaning every action you take towards lowering your opponent's spirit count is also actively bringing your count closer to zero. It's an unbelievable test of resource management and value determination, as a card that seems incredibly powerful at first glance might not be worth playing simply because it just costs too damn much. I mean, this game has literal pot of greed and it's rarely used at all because it straight up costs a tenth of your life total. While games of Elestrals don't fly by at the pace of a Ritual Beast combo, each turn showcases intense back and forth gameplay and skill expression that is typically lacking in games that are this early on in their lifespan. And with the various comeback mechanics you have access to, games very rarely feel out of reach until they're actually over. The reason I say Elestral scratches the same itch for interaction as Yu-Gi-Oh does for me is due largely in part to the counter runes. These are a specific type of back row that are, in essence, the Elestral's equivalent to normal trap cards. They are exceptionally powerful cards that can be used on either player's turn, and they give the game a degree of interaction that keeps you interested in the game at all times. I've played enough Pokemon to know that watching your opponent essentially play the game by themselves for 5 minutes while the only thing you can do is sit there helplessly as you watch them bridge shuffle their deck for the 5th time before passing back doesn't necessarily provide the most interactive experience in the world. Elestral simultaneously feels interactive enough to where both players are constantly making impactful decisions at all points in the game, while also being restricted by the spirit system enough that games aren't determined by whichever player can just barf their entire hand on the field and break the Guinness World Records for most negates on board at one time. Electromite will be back one day, Triff. I just don't know if it'll be in our lifetime at this point. If the gameplay sounds at all interesting to you, stick around or go to this timestamp in the video where I'll be showing off some gameplay of just how down to the wire these games can go. And while we're on the topic of the game's creator, I think the absolute biggest strength that Elestrals has going for it right now is the level of communication and care provided by its team. Yes, Yu-Gi-Oh players, I know. Konami's treatment of its player base isn't actually the industry standard for all card games. Things like product shipping timelines, quality control changes, and behind the scenes card design ideology are all communicated up front, 
and rarely, if ever, is the community left in the dark for long when something goes wrong. Hell, they even released a full roadmap for the entire first year of releases before the game even dropped. It took us 25 years of begging Konami to finally tell us up front when we can expect a ban list to drop. And it's still not here! Post-editing JT here. It's out. And uh, it's... It definitely is a ban list. Uh, catch me casting Astrabbit in defense for the next few months, baby. I think A-Drive and his team have done a fantastic job of creating a culture around the game that shows respect from creator to consumer and vice versa. If there's anything you take away from this video at all, just know that the game's creator really does care about his community, which I just think is really freaking cool. Freaking, I said. I'm sure by this point, some of you have seen the various Alessials promotional videos done by YouTubers in the past. During Kickstarter, A-Drive had reached out to creators from a bunch of different card games to do uh, introductory videos about the game and show up the product. And I think a lot of them were done really well, even if those creators didn't end up sticking with the game. I for one was introduced to the game through a promotional video done by Nim Nim a few years ago, and I kind of just took off from there. I contributed part of the more than $1 million the game made in its Kickstarter campaign, and I've been an ambassador for the game ever since. I've helped run demos for the game at my local stores, I've helped build decks for new players, and everyone I've interacted with that's given the game a try has said that they absolutely love the gameplay. Oh, and in case you were worrying about the price from all the PTSD that Yu-Gi-Oh has provided in recent years, let me be upfront about this. The most expensive low rarity card in Alessials right now costs around $15, and it's already confirmed to be getting reprinted soon. I think I just heard a group of Lurkana players fall to their knees. So yeah, I'm like head to toe all in on this game. I'm straight up addicted to this shit. I'm so addicted that about a month ago, I made the trip down to Austin, Texas for the Yu-Gi-Oh! NAWCQ because I knew that some people from the Alessials community were gonna be there as well, and I was fiending to play some Alessials in person. That's right. I went on a trip to a Yu-Gi-Oh! event with the sole purpose of playing a game that wasn't Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> There was even an Illustrials local that was happening at an LGS in the area before the event began that I was planning on going to until my flights got delayed by 20 hours, forcing me to miss the local entirely, and all I got in compensation was a $12 meal voucher that didn't even pay for my entire sandwich from Subway. Thank you, American Airlines. Can you tell I'm a little bit salty about that one? Regardless, being able to meet that many people who also play this brand new game I love at an event for a completely different card game was just super surreal. And it kind of gave me this feeling like, yeah, I think this is something that could be up there eventually. The game is by no means perfect, but I think it has the foundation of a game that can really rival the biggest names in the industry down the line. If you're at all interested in learning more about Alessials, I implore you to check out their Discord server. There you can find more information on how to play the game, keep up with product releases, and play some games with other members of the community. There's even a digital app where you can play one-on-one -on -one games with the entire card flow completely free. If you want to try out the game first before sinking your wallet in, I definitely recommend checking it out. There's more information on that in the Discord as well. Finally, if you want to find out even more information on the game, don't forget to check out channels like The Electronauts, Caster's Corner, Words TCG, and many, many more who pioneered the way for Alessial's content here on YouTube. Their channels will all be linked down in the description. And while you're down there, you might as well slide on over to the subscribe button too. I'm planning to start doing a lot more Alessial's content on this channel going forward, so hit the bell if you want to stay updated on when I upload next. I promise this won't be like the last video until 2026 or some shit. I, I promise. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now let's go check out some gameplay. Let's go. Let's go. Not rabbit, sadly. Oh. Which is not bad. Why were all the good searchers thunder, man? I know. Like, I think that's just the game. How, how did you misplay that so bad? <laughs> Every thunder card goes plus one. Yeah. Besides well, so Sparky, it, it went plus one by proxy. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's your opponent going. Like, yeah. Negative. <laughs> Uh, so two, go. Bull two. Oh, you want two, go. Search option. Unfortunately, you have to expend. Yeah. That was the majority of my, okay, so this is how you feel. 
fish pasta. Um, I don't like that you cast that bunny in the chat. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Bunny effect is good. Oh, um, I'm sus. Says the man who plays bunny in attack. I'm sus. We have two back row. You play bunny in attack. But I'm sus. <laughs> Just making sure I understand. <laughs> The fingers are pointed towards me. <laughs> I feel like Botuga should not be an extensive search. Yeah, I get to, makes, I get you should go Megan Spirits if you just, exactly. If you cast I get like especially when it's only on cast. I just feel like. <laughs> well, no, it's because it's from a guaranteed pack that had every single Yeah, but those packs aren't in print anymore. Come on. Pay you off the money. Super damage. I want to keep the guy. And I want you. I don't want you to trigger your failure. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna unless you bounce it. It's gonna have one way or another. That's right. You know what? Let's. Trouble out the boss monster. Exactly. That's how you do it. I'm gonna PTA. PTA. That's fair enough. We'll set one. Uh, I will go battle. We'll try to swim. Yep, yep. Cutting uh, off? Yep. If you like to pay three more, <laughs> I will. Let's go. Uh, very <laughs> Big seven, <laughs> seven spirit swing. I love that. Go ahead. What's your life? Uh, like ten. All right, not bad. Yeah. Cherry pie. Burn, burn, burn. 
Burn, burn, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah, no. <laughs> that wasn't no. the same time. That's a crazy time. 